if I am an Indian student or a developer, what are some of the skills that I should optimize for at least for the next coming years? I can say very easily, there are thousands of PhDs, right? Waiting to be done. Pick your favorite problem, right? In the world. And you can use the power of technology, right? To, to make a meaningful dent. You're the director of DeepMind. And I don't think there's any better person to actually ask this question to. Dr. Manish, thank you so much for taking out the time in order to talk to me. Just to sort of give a quick introduction, my name is Shridev. I run a company called 100X Engineers, where we do a lot of generative AI-based educational content. And we are trying to build one of the biggest builder community uh, on the planet in terms of generative AI. We are very deeply involved in a lot of Google's models, a lot of other models that are actually out there as well. Uh, let me start by asking you, since we are doing this in India, we're doing this in Bengaluru, how has Google been involved in the Indian ecosystem? Uh, not just on an enterprise level, but also on a um, consumer level, also on a young developer level. Well, what kind of projects have you personally been involved in? What is that like? So Google has always had that very special relationship, right, with India in terms of users. And we are seeing a similar thing emerge with as we develop, provide all of these AI uh, tools and models uh, that we find the very, very large uh, set of developers, right? So there are something like over 1.5 million developers uh, that are using Gemini models, using AI Studio. Right. Uh, and a very large number of those developers are, are based in India. Right. So we see a very, very actively engaged developer community. Mm -hmm. The other thing which is very fascinating is that the developers here, they bring such richness right, to the various kind of, the kind of problems that they are tackling as well as the different also dimensions right, that they bring. Because India, as we talked about even today, it has these uh, three aspects, right, of multimodal, mobile first, and multilingual. Correct. So we have developers dealing with all of these challenges, which right. makes it very, very exciting. So that, that's a perfect segue to what I uh, had in mind next. Uh, so Google has been working on a bunch of Indic LLMs with um, a lot of different languages so that, uh, let's say, someone living in UP can actually speak to uh, the AI in, in their native language and sort of understand that. What's been the progress on that? Uh, what's been the developments over there? What is that like currently? Yeah, so let me just first acknowledge that it's a huge problem. Uh, yeah. But one that really truly excites us and energizes us. Because uh, I really believe that ultimately, like Google has been a wonderful tool, right? To, to democratize, uh, to, to provide access to information, right? For Correct. anybody. Because, I mean, anytime I have a problem, I mean, even well before I joined Google, I would start with a Google search. I remember when I joined Google, I asked that question that, that people like me are the privileged ones, right? Who understand English, Correct. we have information Absolutely. at our fingertips. What about that laborer's daughter in Chhattisgarh? What about that farmer's son in Assam? Yes. How do we enable them with access to that same level of information, right? That you and I mm -hmm. have. So that's been like a very uh, clear part of our mission which led us on this journey to start building these multilingual models as well as do a lot of basic research and contribute to the community. So it led to, again, I mean, earlier we had provided these models, uh, we had built this model called Mural, which at that time provided the largest coverage of Indian languages, 16 Indian languages, mm -hmm. and we made those embeddings freely available uh, to uh, developers, researchers uh, on TensorFlow Hub as well as Hugging Face. Mm -hmm. And we had over 16,000 researchers, developers use it. Lovely. I challenged the team to, to at least cover all 22 scheduled languages. Mm -hmm. And I was very happy to see our lead, Partha, come back and saying, you're not being ambitious enough. 22 isn't enough. Right. There are so many languages that we speak. He, he educated me that there are 60 Indian languages which have over a million speakers each. There are 125 languages which have over 1 lakh speakers each. Oh, wow. That's news so, to me as well. So, yes. So, uh, and Partha no, said, no. I want to build a model no, 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 more no, 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 that no, understands no, no. all of those at least 125 languages. Now, very, very fascinating goal. Easier said than done. Because the next thing I learned was that 72 out of these 125 languages are zero corpus languages. That means there is zero, there was zero known digital data. Oh, on those okay. languages. That's a big problem. So, which led to projects like Vani, 
where we have been collecting speech data from different corners of India and making all of that data freely available to the research community, to the startup community, to the developers. Right. Uh, to make use of these, you want to build your own LLMs, please make use of that data. And we've conducted hackathons uh, where we encourage people. So at today's event, we announced that how we have released data from the very first phase. So over 14,000 hours of speech data covering now 58 Indian languages um, from collected from 80 districts, which we have made openly available. Now we are on to the next phase. We are, we are now collecting data from 160 districts uh, covering every state of India. And the eventual goal is to collect data from each and every district of India. So we right. want data from every corner of India and, and that data to be informing our model right and it's it's amazing how you leveraged the community out there the developer community the uh, startup community out there in order to sort of uh, make this like a mission statement so that all of you can go, actually go and chase it i recently skimmed through one of the papers that you had shared uh, which was uh, culturally competent text to image models which sounded really awesome because i remember during the early days when image models came out uh, it didn't really work like it was supposed to work. Right. And there was a, there were a bunch of uh, questionable things that it was actually spurring out. Uh, so this obviously became the answer. So that it, it knows, it's, culture has no, no answers. Culture right. has things that only people in those particular cultures and regions would actually understand. Uh, could you talk a little more about uh, that, that particular yeah. one? So when we think about inclusivity, I think we have to, what we realized was we have to go beyond language inclusivity. Because language is an important dimension. But but now if you think about now, <clears throat> let's say, responding to that query from that, let's say, that person in Assam, right? That child in Assam or that, that girl in Chhattisgarh, when she's asking question, you don't want to the model to like come up with the answer in English and simply translate that into the local language. Correct. You want to answer it based on the understanding, right, of the local context of the cultural nuances. So what we recognized, our researchers recognized, is that inclusivity means not just understanding different languages, it also means understanding different cultures. So I would say we are still very early in that journey of but I trying think it's to infuse in our models, right? A deeper understanding of different cultures of the world. Now I'd like to sort of step aside from the research and sort of try to address a bunch of questions that's sort of that, that's looming uh, with Indian students, Indian developers uh, out there. You're the director of DeepMind and I don't think there's any better person to actually ask this question to. The ecosystem is changing, right? Last year, what is capable was completely different. This year, what is capable is completely different. Uh, I was very impressed with VO, video models, right? Uh, I saw video models last year and I'm like, there's absolutely no chance AI I can make videos this good like good, like ca uh, camera quality good, uh, at least for the next five years. And then all these video models came out and that blew my mind. So the pace is absolutely insane. The challenge that actually comes with that is for today's generation who's in their early 20s, who's in college, who's in their first jobs, it kind of become tricky because they have no idea where to start from. They have no idea what kind of skills to optimize. Uh, so could you provide your perspective on um, if I... I am an Indian student or a developer. What are some of the skills that I should optimize for, at least for the next coming years? Uh, maybe in terms of programming languages, maybe in terms of frameworks, maybe in terms of uh, soft skills as well. Yeah. So first of all, let me just start by uh, having like students, right? They should recognize. I consider all of you, all of the young people, very very privileged, because. At my time, I mean, when I entered the field of computer science, I mean, I'd never even seen a computer yeah. uh, when I opted for computer science. Mm -hmm. And I could never have imagined, even after like I got my PhD and started working, I could not have imagined the kind of capabilities, right, that computing would enable. So I think we are living in this amazingly opportune moment in history where technology has already reached a point where it is... It has that ability to impact mm -hmm. each and every aspect, right, of how the world is run. Mm -hmm. So, I the first and foremost thing I would say is, look, seize that moment. 
I mean, absolutely. You are you are entering your career right at a moment where you have the power yeah. of technology behind your back, right? Correct. And you can use it to literally imagine any problem. I mean, pick pick your favorite problem, right, in the world, and you can use the power of technology, right, to to make a meaningful dent on that problem, to make a meaningful difference to the world, mm-hmm. uh, based on the power of technology, right? So first and foremost. <clears throat> i would say recognize that power that you have with you uh, and 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 really kind of make be ambitious be bold and think about again because the technology will keep getting better mm-hmm. so do not be constrained by limits of what today's technology can do also extrapolate in the in the future and think about how you utilize the power of technology to solve the kind of problems right that you thought were previously unsolvable so that's the first and foremost thing i would say right the other is i mean it's back to basics i mean focus on the fundamentals right because a lot of ai and machine learning deep learning all of this is based on a very solid foundation of math yeah. so get those basic skills right of uh, probability statistics linear algebra algebra optimization and so on and kind of uh, get your fundamentals right right and the other is just be open to and commit to lifelong learning because technology will keep evolving and you have to just you cannot pretend that or you cannot think that okay whatever uh, skills i picked up right in school and so on i mean i can just utilize them right for the rest of my life you have to constantly learn right uh, so as long as you have the basic fundamentals you are committing to lifelong learning mm-hmm. and set your goals high set your ambitions high you will do well. for that i have one question that sort of made me uh, curious you mentioned this point where um, you are advising students to uh, learn probability statistics uh, linear algebra all these underlying things that uh, are fundamentals of machine learning itself um, paradoxically from at least what i have been seeing um, we've reached a stage where machine learning is a subject that is as deep as let's say mathematics or physics but probably that was not the case a few decades earlier we've had ai winters we've had places where this whole field has stopped and right now one of the th- things that um is clearly visible for the field of machine machine learning and ai is the level of depth that is out there the number of papers have skyrocketed yeah. and that's a great um, sort of proving point of uh, that testament um and this sort of brings a question to my mind which is for for someone who's entering into this field from an academic perspective for them to be able to um have an outcome um it is significantly more challenging because they have more steps to sort of cover uh this they probably have to do uh, a bachelor's they have to do a masters then they probably have to get into uh, a phd program or something like that uh which probably would not have been the case in earlier days uh, i'm not sure i might be wrong over here no i mean researchers we've always kind of relied on people doing phds right who, who but the level of specialization on ai and ml in yes. that that's available currently has never been available earlier yes so, i would also say but the access to information and kind of uh uh correct that's absolutely. never been never been better absolutely uh so coming to the question right uh in today's world is an ai ml degree um still something that someone uh, can actually make something out of in terms of an actual outcome uh because since this field has since this field has gotten very complicated since this field is moving extremely fast that very few people in the world actually know where it's going people like you is it still would you still advise someone to actually pursue that as a degree or is that really going to change education wise no so uh, uh great question i mean i personally believe because i think uh, we are in such fascinating times that on one hand all of these ai technologies are becoming so powerful Correct. at the same time there are so many open challenges yeah. with these technologies themselves right we've talked about problems of factuality about biases about safety how do you deal with out of distribution data how do you make these models more efficient how do we make them inclusive in terms of understanding different languages understanding different cultures so there is such a rich diversity of still open challenges that we need to 
still overcome to to make these models truly uh, work right for humanity uh, i think there are can say very easily there are thousands of phds right waiting to be done yeah, yeah. in the field of ai itself and now you think about ai as a a very important tool to enable you to make progress in other fields one in particular that i am really excited about is just the overall science alphafold uh, i mean alphafold is a very very shining example right is an inspiring example of what's feasible i mean it used to take an entire phd you were talking about phd it used to take an entire phd about 5 years of work before you uncovered the structure of a single protein and what alphafold has done is essentially come up with effectively solved that problem and in fact all of the pro some 200 million proteins known to human kind alpha fold has come up with the structure right of all of those proteins so it's like it's helped accelerate something like 200 million phd's right like a billion phd years of work of scientific work right, right. has been enabled by alpha right. fold think about other fields think about again there is work a very interesting work happening in material science right how do you discover new materials whatever you you know this is the application you want a material with this kind of properties how do you engineer that material or drug uh, design right where again models like alpha fold are very very powerful tools but ultimately how do you uh, design right drugs that will take care of all of these different conditions uh, right. that human kind is dealing with climate change uh how do you make fusion a reality in terms of being able to produce energy without polluting right so the environment from what i can understand uh so once these models have gotten capable enough uh which they will in a few years the focus might be diverted into what are the big questions that we can answer and what are the really big problems that we can actually go out and solve which is still something that is going to remain but that would be assisted and by i would say models. let's not even wait because already there is a lot of power in these models that you can put to good use mm -hmm. so we've had we've seen examples like alpha fold there has been examples of weather forecasting that is again being, being revolutionized right through the use of ai uh, and so i would encourage right more of the students to also not neglect science right because science is an area which i mean which is looking at solving some of the fundamental problems right facing humanity so start applying science uh, ai right to to accelerate scientific discovery in different fields thank you so much dr manish thank you for giving thank me you. your time thank absolutely lovely talking to you